My name is Urban Meneses, and this year, I, along with four other engineering students, are going to compete in the SAE Aero Design Regular Class Competition. The overall goal of the competition is to design, test, and build an RC aircraft that is capable of carrying the maximum amount of weight within a 200 feet runway. The airplane is limited to one single electric motor configuration and a one kilowatt power limiter must be integrated within the circuit. The power limiter is designed to penalize any team that exceeds the one kilowatt threshold. I will now give you a demonstration as to what happens when the one kilowatt limit is exceeded. So as you can see, engaging the limiter causes our motor to stall, which can ultimately lead to our plane crashing and end up looking like the plane shown in this image. This subplot shows the power and thrust data collected for the 18x8 propeller. As you can see, the limiter is engaged at three different instances, where at each instance, there is a significant reduction in thrust, which is not something we desire. This plot shows the power and control signal data collected over a 40 second interval with the SAE power limiter in place. From this plot, we can see that the power being utilized by the system drops significantly once the average power, the red curve, exceeds the one kilowatt limit. The substantial reduction in power is the numerical representation of the motor stalling, which can potentially end our participation in the competition if it were to occur when the plane is in mid-flight. The width of the control signal that causes the limiter to engage is determined to be approximately 1.73 milliseconds. For my senior project, I have designed an active control system that monitors and adjusts the power being utilized by the propulsion system before the SAE power limiter gets the chance to do so. I have designed a PI controller to serve as a pre-limiting device with the overall goal of preventing the SAE power limiter from taking action. Before I go any further, let me provide you with a brief description about the function of a PI controller. A PI controller is a feedback control loop that calculates an error signal by taking the difference between the output of a system, which in this case is the power being drawn from the battery, and the set point. The set point is the level at which we like to have our system running. Ideally, we like our system to be running near max power without causing the limiter to engage. It is important to point out that due to the complexity of the electronic components within the circuit pad, I was not able to accurately create a model for the system. Having a model would have allowed me to simulate the system in a software package such as MATLAB Simulink and assist me in finding the right proportional and integral constant parameters for the controller. Unfortunately, due to the lack of a model, the parameters were obtained via a trial and error format. This figure shows a software level block diagram of the PI control algorithm. The controller receives a current and voltage measurement which it then uses to calculate the power being drained from the battery. Once the power is measured, the error signal is calculated by taking the difference between the set point and the power measured. The error signal then goes into the PI control loop where it gets multiplied by the proportional and integral constant. The output of the PI control loop is a power value and in order to convert it to a quantity that is comparable to that of the control signal, it goes through a power to PWM signal converter. The adjusted PWM signal then gets compared to that throttle signal that is being sent by the pilot. The least of the two gets sent to the control system, where the control system encompasses the battery, motor, speed controller, and limiter. So in order to prevent the power limiter from engaging and causing our motor to stall, the PI controller was designed to serve as a pre-limiting device and guarantee that the power limiter will not engage during flight. I will now give you a demonstration of the PI controller.
you can see, even when ramping up to full throttle, the SAE power limiter was never engaged, which validates that the PI controller is functioning as designed. This plot shows the power and control signal data collected over a 45 second interval with the integration of the PI controller at a set point of 950 watts. From this plot, we can see that the average power displayed by the red curve being utilized by the system never exceeds the 1 kilowatt limit, regardless of what the control signal input is. In the SAE limiter test figure, we see that the limiter engages at a throttle signal width of approximately 1.73 milliseconds. But in this figure, the throttle signal width exceeds the 1.73 millisecond control signal without causing any reductions in the power consumption. The average power utilized during this test run, while the throttle was fully engaged, was about 915 watts, which is not the 950 watts that I expected, but I suspect that the power consumption can approximate the set point with the proper KI and KP values. The fact that I can designate a specific power set point and have our propulsion system utilize a power near the specified set point tells me that I have met my goal by having designed an active control system that monitors and optimizes the power consumption of an SAE aero aircraft.